Hey everyone, welcome back to Obstacles to Opportunity. This is Everyone Hates Tesla. Today, we're going to be diving into Tesla's Q2 earnings call, and there are some exciting updates and key takeaways. So let's jump right into it, all right? Tesla has just released its Q2 2024 earnings report, and it's packed with interesting details. And here's a breakdown of the most important highlights. We're going to watch this video, and we're going to stay close. We're going to keep up. All right, hold on. Give me a second. Let me pull up the video for you guys so we can jump right into this good information. I mean, guys, we're going to be finding the hidden gems. All right. A lot of people are not understanding this about the financials and breaking them down to this extent. So let's put on our magnifying glasses or magnifying glasses and let's dive into the deeper details. All right, let's do it. If you take a closer look, you're going to find some real gems. It really all depends on your perspective, doesn't it? Today, we're going to hear from Cern Basher, who came prepared with charts and analysis. He'll share with you what he found regarding the profit analysis, auto gross margin, components of the revenue, and a lot of other surprises. Cern is a chartered financial analyst. He's currently running his own investment advisory firm. So go check him out. All right. So like, share, subscribe, and then follow him also. All right firm called Brilliant Advice, providing wealth management services. Take it away, CERN. So was this second quarter earnings report from Tesla a bad report? Well, I think it depends on your perspective. So certainly there are a number of things that you could become worried about. First of all, if you look at... If you're a normie and you're worrying about the clickbaits, then you could be worried about that. If you're a normie and you're worrying about what Elon says on Twitter, then that could be a problem. But if you're worried about the fundamentals of Tesla, then come on, join us. At the gross profit per vehicle sold um, now is now under $6,000 as of the second quarter. So that's a number that's uh, that's lower, I think, than, than we'd like to see. Also, you could look at the profitability of the company, uh, the auto gross margins, for example. Um, while you know they, they were higher and they've come down and they've, they've sort of flatlined, if you exclude regulatory credits, which a lot of people on Wall Street like to do, you can see that gross margins have continued to, to decline. Yeah. So for excluding regulatory credits, then it has flatlined and it has gone down. Now, of course, this is something to be worried about, but if you're looking at the competition, it's nowhere close. And so we're gonna do that in the next video, but I want you guys just to remember the competition is nowhere close. When we're looking at Ford, when we're looking at GM, they're dealing with massive amounts of problems, okay? But let's continue. We haven't seen a stabilization or a turn in that number yet. And you could also say that over the last six quarters, we've seen a flatlining of revenue growth. So you could easily become concerned about the growth prospects of the company if you're looking at these numbers. And when you consider Tesla's other businesses, the services and other businesses, uh, including supercharging. And of course, they're going to have to mess us up with some advertisement. Look at that green. It looks bad. It looks pretty cool. That's Thailand. So here we go. You could say, well, those those are promising businesses, but as a percent of revenue, you know, they're about only 20%. So, all right. So if we're looking at other businesses and the other businesses, for an example, we got auto revenue without credits, right? So as you can see, it takes up 80% of the revenue, right? <gasps> okay, amazing. This is revenue. Now, energy and other services like supercharging network. So that's about 20% of the revenue. Right, so it's not much. Much, excuse me. The majority is basically auto, right? So auto revenue. It's basically a car company at this point. So that's very interesting. But guys, just like with real estate, I'm going to look at revenue, but I'm also going to want to see where does my profit come from? Profit, net operating income. Now with Tesla, we're going to be looking at profit. Now let's see what, where the majority of the actual percentage comes from when we're chopping down profit, let's see. So you could say, you know, this is an auto company and the prospects of the auto company are not particularly bright. Now, on the other hand, there is a bright spot with Tesla Energy. Uh, this is a chart of the cumulative storage deployed for Tesla Energy uh, since since the company's inception. And we're now approaching 45 gigawatts. And we just, the company just uh, deployed about nine gigawatts this last quarter. And so that certainly is a bright spot for the company. And not only the nine for the quarter, but also we just signed a contract for about 15 plus, 15 plus gigawatts. That's one of the largest contracts. Now, of course, it's not going to be necessarily showing on Q3, but we already started the process and signed that contract for that 15 gigawatts. So 
anybody saying, well, we don't know where it's going to go in the future. Hey, well, we know we got 15 on the books. So let's continue. Also, when you factor in the growth of the energy business and services and other business, you can see here on the quarterly revenue, we're, we're seeing some nice growth there as well. And so growth in these other businesses, right? What are these other businesses, right? Supercharger, network, and then also energy. When you factor in the profitability of those businesses, you can see that services and other and energy and regulatory credits now account for about a third of the company's total profits. So that's not an insignificant amount. So regulatory credits, which most people don't want to count. Okay, cool. But at least 10% of the profits. And then, like I said, if you add in regulatory credits, then it's going to be more than 10%, right? We're going to be like almost 30%. 30% of the profits is coming from these other areas. Now, once the energy gets going, guys, it's going to beat the auto. It's going to dwarf the auto. And let's not account you know, full self-driving. Let's not account optimist. We're just going to focus on energy. Another way, you know, another thing I think that's, that's, you know, a bright spot is the profitability of Tesla's other business lines. So while automotive gross margins have come down, you can see that Tesla Energy now is the most profitable business line and the services and other businesses now contributing to profits as well. So those are all, all positive things. Now, also, too, if you're kind of looking at this when you're starting to look at the auto industry and the profit margins going down, remember that the car business is cyclical. And not only that, that it kind of is affected by the macroeconomics. But when we're looking at energy profit margins and also services and other profit margins, these are the margins that are increasing, though, even in these conditions. So, again, imagine if you're having one product like Amazon. Amazon's margins started to decline, especially for retail, right? Once you got Walmart in competition with Amazon, then the margins for even just FBA and selling merch products and retail products on Amazon starts to decline. But when we're looking at AWS, it's like, what is Amazon doing with AWS? Why are they A8, what is it, SAAS? Why do they have software as a service, right? IAAS, infrastructure as a service. Why are they selling this? Why are they selling what they're selling when they sell Amazon, AWS? Most people are just like, oh, this is not your business. You're not in tech this way. You sell books. You sell onesies. And eventually what? AWS was where the majority of the profit comes from now these days. Now, in terms of the regulatory credits, I look at it a little bit differently than most people. Wall Street likes to exclude regulatory credits. They basically say that that may go away one day. And while I agree with that, I think that this simply excluding regulatory credits is a mistake. The way I view it is Tesla's compared. Now, here we go. Regulatory credits will go away one day. That's one thing. So they're right about that. But this is the way we view it. And this is the way he views it. Competitors are giving Tesla free money every quarter to help defray their investments in CapEx. They're helping Tesla build new factories so that Tesla can make new products to compete with those same competitors. I don't know of any other business or industry where that is possible. And so that's a pretty amazing thing. And it's not an insignificant amount of money. Since um, Q3 of 2018, Tesla's competition have given Tesla almost $9 billion of money with which to build new factories. Um, that's approximately about two gigafactories, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of the amount of money that the competition has given Tesla. So when Tesla is selling a zero emission vehicle regulatory credits, they're selling it to the competitors. The competitors are buying it in cash. And that cash, Elon is not giving it back to shareholders. He's not taking it for himself. He's investing it back in CapEx. CapEx, guys, is when a company invests money back into the company for equipment, things that can increase the income, net operating income, the revenue in the future. So when they're investing in buying new equipment or doing research and development, this could be considered CapEx, okay? Not like maintenance, just doing maintenance and keeping up with a building. That's not CapEx. So CapEx 
10 million dollars or 10 billion excuse me 10 billion going towards building two factories from the competition thank you for it thank you gm now here's where i think a lot of people are getting a bit wrong companies don't grow to be successful companies because they beat earnings expectations quarter in and quarter out we should expect a certain amount of lumpiness and ebbs and flows in the growth of a company. But what is interesting, I think, for Tesla is that just as analysts exclude the regulatory credits because one day they won't be there, by that line of thinking, they should also be excluding the revenue from the auto business because one day that may not be there or it may be such an insignificant amount. What I'm trying to say is that Tesla is on the verge of transforming itself from a company that makes automobiles and sells them for a profit to a company that is using AI powered products that is going to generate recurring revenue from those products. So what is ClickUp? ClickUp is an all-in-one. I don't care about ClickUp. Come on, man. We're smoothing and then let's get out of here. Vehicles, robotaxis, or humanoid robots. And that is going to completely change the nature of the company. So one way to look at this increase in cumulative deliveries over time, which is now over 6 million vehicles that have been delivered since Tesla's inception, is these are the razors that have been put into the world. And now Tesla has the opportunity to convert into the razor blade model where they can earn recurring revenue from using these razors, not, not just selling them. Yeah, of course, right? If they're going to, when they follow through with FSD and they continue to move forward, they already have the vehicles out and they could convert those vehicles into a form of revenue, reoccurring revenue by utilizing FSD and RoboTaxi with those cars. Collecting data has been the research and development side of what those cars have been doing for the longest versus companies like Waymo who had to pay engineers. They had to pay people to experiment with the cars in order to collect the data. And for the most part, Tesla has set up a model where they've been able to sell the cars and allow the customers to collect the data and drive the miles that will help improve the vehicle. And this is very interesting. And there's been a lot of people who have really taken leadership and initiative in driving these cars, posting YouTube videos and making a good life of themselves based off of driving FSD and have been almost like those researchers that are hired by Waymo but this is independent and on your own, building your own business model, but also helping the company get better at increasing FSD technology. And so this is one model that, you know, Tesla has been able to utilize that no other company has been able to do. So this is very interesting that they're going to be able to convert all these already delivered cars into a model of generating revenue. Also, I would point out that the company's investments are not a sign of a company in distress. That in fact, Tesla has been increasing its R&D expenses over time and its CapEx over time. Tesla is on track this year to spend about $10 billion in CapEx. That is not a sign of a company that is struggling. So while the profitability of Tesla's core business today is lower than we would like to see, Tesla is still investing very heavily for this feature that I just talked about. And, and that's the key. I would I love to see that the company is investing money back in CapEx and research and development. And when you have a company that's investing more in research and development, 10 billion, that's a lot of money. And that's not a sign of a company in trouble, but a sign of a company on its way to progressing, investing in itself, investing in its services and products to make them more effective and efficient and have edge-cutted technology that's going to allow us to beat the competition. Are our competitors investing this much money, let alone our competitors, but also not only just in cars, but artificial intelligence? And when you combine the CapEx and R&D, since Tesla's inception, they've invested over $60 billion to build this, this company. Fantastic. Thank you very much, sir. 60 billion. That's a lot of money. That's more than most people can dream about. So thanks for the, the brighter, brighter with Herbert, of course.
Got to hit that like button. Already subscribed, as you know. Let's see what people are talking about in the comment section, okay? Now, these are, I think that profit margin and definitely how much profit is accounting or accounted for the, from the energy, like 10%, that's a good amount, right? And another video, I'm going to cover the difference between Ford, GM, and all of their profit margins and definitely their revenue. Because we always hear people talk about the competition, but nobody actually looks at the competition and sees what they're doing. Like you're talking about, oh my gosh, profit margins on Tesla is going down. Like what's the profit margin for all other car companies? It's extremely lower than Tesla. So even if it goes lower, we're still doubled what they have. Like it's ridiculous. Every stock, or every Tesla stock investor should watch this video. The last slides are brilliant, brilliant, or perhaps should I say razor sharp analysis. And I totally agree with his analysis on the regulatory credits. This is the best financial analysis that other mainstream Wall Streeters, for whatever reason, have ignored. And then, okay, he's always nails the analysis. When Tesla becomes the first corporation hit 10 trillion valuation, none of us should pretend to be shocked. And many still are. And guess what? When when that happens, many will still doubt Tesla. And we had the data for quite some time. And Tesla is building a future economic engine that spans many global market segments. Still to see automotive analysis being asked to comment on quarterly automotive sales when a full global AI and the labor and energy revolution is being driven by Elon Musk every day of the year. And woo, give that person the bomb. I think that's the most important thing I probably ever read in the comment section. And most people are like, oh, I don't believe it. Guys, if you don't believe that, if that's a reach for a global AI labor and energy revolution that's being driven by Elon Musk and the team at Tesla, got to give them their credits, then you might as well doubt that Elon was going to create SpaceX. That is the edge cutting rocket technology that we have today. There's no better company, a country, let alone company, that does it better than Elon, than SpaceX. SpaceX was behind Boeing, Raytheon, General Dynamics, Russia, China, and rocket technology. Now we're the number one, and no one's close to us. That was done by Elon alone. So to say, oh, he can't do it for AI, oh, he can't do it for labor, he can't do it for energy, you're clowning yourself. You can't do it because you twist and you turn doorknobs. That's your occupation. And then the next person says, I will start looking at car production again when it's for robo taxis. Otherwise, I have ignored it for a while. Yeah, me too. But net net, it's still important. So let's it's not completely stupid. All right. It's still important in a lot of ways. Insightful and concise analysis. Benefit from it a lot. Thank you for sharing this great job. All the best regulatory credits are going to keep climbing. Tesla is passing along the savings to their customers while still keeping the same auto margins. Exactly. And I recently sold some of my long term positions and currently sitting on about 250K. Do you think NVIDIA is a good buy right now? I have missed out on the period to buy any good stock recommendations on great or performing stocks will be appreciated hmm. what are people saying you need an expert <laughs> exactly you need to go see an expert i managed to grow my next egg to around 200 120k to over a million i'm especially grateful to advise bruce murdoch from his expertise and expose to different areas of the market. Okay, now we get all that crazy stuff. I'm not worried about that. And I'm not sure it would be easy, but all Tesla really has to do is to come out with a sub 25,000K Model 2 or a mid-sized truck and a next cutter. And they'll be right to profitability again with the automotive sector. And I think that's not even a thing that we really have to worry about, guys, at this point. Like still clinging to the cars. I mean, it's good for us to come out with the 25 thousand dollar model two right that's just a name that's not the official name uh that would be cool that would be nice but we still have a lot of work to do in everything else that's like saying hey amazon just come out with more products in retail and leave behind aws All right don't worry about aws like no the profit margin on the energy is extremely large same thing for optimus same thing for fsd so that's nothing to shy away from. Dojo would be amazing. And Elon in the earnest call said he's going to push for it.
or dojo. All right, so it's good. Regulatory credits may go away as a car maker. It's not the name Tesla. Go broke trying to make EVs. I don't think it will be long before government kowtow to the car industry on these credit payments. And Elon has said in the past that if they cannot perfect FSD, that Tesla car business is all for naughty. I think Elon realized that it would just be a matter of time before other manufacturers figure out how to make profitable EVs or dump their EVs on the market so cheap that Tesla would also not make a profit. Guys, they can't. We'll go through their numbers. Like, you guys swear they're bigger than what they are. They're struggling. They're hurting. They're barely making a profit on their current business. We don't have to go to EVs. They're not making money on their current business models. Selling you normies cars. They're not making a lot of money. I guess you guys did not understand that during the bailout. I guess you still have mental blockers and problems. Even with a bailout. <laughs> Anyways, this is why Tesla has diversified into Energy Cyber Cab and Tesla Bot. No, they have been doing that for the longest. FSD is nothing new, okay? And those will be the future of the company. Tesla may well only make cyber cabs in the future, and the other car makers make affordable EVs. People, man. People have trouble actually understanding the company, but everyone hates Tesla. There's nothing new to that. I appreciate you guys being here and listening on this actual stream. And I think that's going to be, you know, that's all for today, <laughs> right? That's all for today, the breakdown of Tesla's Q2 earnings. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more updates on Tesla and the EV market. And let me know in the comments what you think about today's Tesla performance on its quarter and what you're looking for in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And as we always say, everyone hates Tesla. It's nothing new. We all.